Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion the Show. The number one show in the fucking world. Yeah, bitch. number one show in the world on Spotify as of as of uh, last week. I don't know if that's curated, by the way. Yeah, who knows? Um, all I know is all that I know is it popped up. Spotify liked us enough to put. I mean, they liked us in Barstool enough to put us right there. We were the only two. One A, one B. I think is probably what it is. Yeah, we, and we, we love Barstool. We're yeah, huge we like fans, guys. And then uh, our sponsors over at Luke Belair. Uh, dot com forward slash drinking bros. The Champers, dude, they made us engraved drinking bros bottles. Am I a one for this, Jamie? Goddamn right I am. I need it. I need it for this. Made us uh, personal engraved bottles for this. Personalized. I don't know, know if you get any bros drunker. Logos. I don't know if you get any drunker by drinking the one with our logo on it. But I think you do. I get, I get drunker on, on uh, pride. Yeah, right? you do. On pride. Uh, your dick gets harder. Speaking of your dick getting harder, we have. Dr. Frank on the show today. Welcome. Oh, boy. You're already regretting this decision. <laughs> that was a phenomenal lead in. We're man. Thank two you. minutes in. You're already <laughs> regretting this decision. That's what I love to do on this show. Uh, world famous Dr. Frank is here. I'm going to be real. Like, it, there is not many times where I am serious on this show, but I, I feel like you may have saved my life. And I asked you to be on the show. Um, I've, I've had some problems recently over the last few years with different medical things. I, I had shingles. Um, I, I told the audience about this, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I got a bunch of blood work done, and it turned out that I had shingles. Um, you start gaining weight, weird shit starts to happen to your body, and I was overcompensating by working out more and more and more and more until it became like a fucking truck. Like I, We joked about it being jacked as fuck and all that shit, but that was the real answer, but I was too big... And it didn't feel right. My body didn't feel right. Now, ultimately, you're treating symptoms and not causes at that point. Exactly. You know, not, not understanding the underlying cause of what's going on. You just try and do the best you can to make yourself feel as good like, as you this can. This is what I know, so I'm yeah. going to do this. Exactly. And, and, and everybody, everybody falls into that, by the way. Everybody does. Especially guys when it comes to these type of issues because they don't want to go talk to anybody about it. Which is kind of fucking stupid, to be honest. But, it, but you're right. And as guys, we don't really talk to each other about no. shit. And I treated it <clears throat> as if it was a problem from my 20s of like, oh, hey, man, you're putting on a couple pounds. Go to the gym, right? Yeah. And I was destroying myself <laughs> in the gym. And I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I was like, fuck, this, this is too big. Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep continuing to work, work out like this. And I don't want to be that jacked all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to be a little thinner and not eating nine steaks and, and all right, of that other right, shit. Like, yeah. I felt like I was training wrestling or, you know, for like to wrestle at University of Iowa or something. You know, one of those steak schools where it's yeah, just like, oh, yeah, you need a lot of steak at Iowa to wrestle. You know, it's, J.J. Uh, Watt eats like nine chicken breasts a day. Yeah. And I, two whole avocados. That's like that doesn't include his normal meals. No, that's just to start that's his in morning addition probably. to what he normally yeah. eats. Jesus, that's a lot. He eats like fucking 10,000 calories a day or some shit. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So but I, you're not J.J. Watt. I'm not J.J. Watt, and nor, nor do I want to be. No, I want to be that. Ross Patterson. I want to be a podcast host and, and all of that other <laughs> fun shit that comes with it. You know, as an author, it was just like it was hulking people out. Mm. And I went into my doctor, which, you know, my family. It was not me. Medical practice, correct. And I, I had taken some tests and gotten some blood work done because a, a bunch of listeners had suggested, hey, man, maybe look into like hormone replacement or testosterone mm. or whatever. And I went in, and I didn't qualify. And my, my, my family physician had said, they said no. And I was like, man, I, it doesn't seem right. What's the level supposed to be? In yeah. which we're going to talk about this in yeah, a second. Yeah. What's the level going what's, to, what's it supposed to be? Where am I at? And they were like, well, you know, it's, it's X, whatever that, what's the lowest number you can So, I mean, depending on what lab you're looking at, I mean, it's bottom numbers like 250, okay. 280, you know, all the way up to, 800. And I always find it interesting when I look at a lab report that, that is sent to me, and well, like, normal is between 250 and 800. Mm, that's a big-ass well, range. What is that, like a 400% difference? Yeah. yeah. So you're telling me you could go from 799 <clears throat> to 251 and still be considered normal. Yeah. Like, that makes no sense. Yeah. Makes absolutely no sense. <clears throat> and so, I, look, they were sending me to like other places of like, oh, hey, you should try this and this and this. And I was like, man, I, I don't feel right. I, I was recommended to you. And we did some lab work together, and you're like, oh, man, I, I think testosterone and maybe some estrogen blockers and some other things would work in your situation. And, and it did. 
Um, the reason why at the top of the show I feel like you saved my life is there was part of me mentally where I, f- I felt like I was crazy. Uh, like something, something chemically was off inside my Well, it's a hormone. So brain. any of you guys out there that are watching the show, and most of our audience is male, you guys out there that are watching the show that deal with women once a month when they're on their period and their hormones are going crazy or when they're pregnant or when their hormones are just out of whack because they're on new birth control or any other thing that's going on, they act like fucking psychos, right? But yeah. that's how it makes you feel. So if you're feeling like that, if you're like maybe Antonio Brown's got some testosterone problems, dude. Uh, he might have too much. He might have. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> might but, be the problem. Yeah. But the point of that is like hormonal issues fuck with your head in a major way. Like it's a compounding thing, and it and it fucks with your sleep, which is also a compounding thing. Yeah. There's like all these things that keep toppling over, and so finally you're a like, motherfucker. I honestly think that those issues are a big reason why a lot of dudes kill themselves coming out of the military. Which is why we wanted to have you on the show. <clears throat> uh, a big portion of our audience is is military and, and first responders, and I think this is an issue that a lot of people are dealing with that they won't talk about. So I decided, hey man, I'm going to call you in because. I, this is the first time I've, I've been seeing you now for, I think, four or five months. Mm-hmm. It's the first time where I felt normal again, like my mentally and physically and all that stuff where I'm like, <laughs> all right, cool. I, I, I don't feel like I, uh, I want to kill somebody or kill myself. There's like a fog in your brain. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. how uh, when you go into ketosis, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but uh, you, you, the clarity in your mind is incredible. Obviously, I don't think ketosis is a good idea for most people, but... You can talk to Richard Ryan about this, too, or just watch his Instagram. Sometimes he talks about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the difference between those two things and all the ways that it impacts your life are crazy. I mean, it's just insane. Your, your life is totally different when your shit's working right. So I, I wanted to chat with you about why I had to go to a private doctor for this. Like, why, why doesn't a family physician do this? Even though, like, literally, man, there was, like, thoughts of suicide and things like that where – just irrational thoughts for no reason whatsoever. My life is great. Great friends, great family. Love doing what I do every single day. I could not figure out what was going on mentally. Why wouldn't a, a, a normal family physician through your insurance cover something like this? It, it, that's a good question. I get that question a lot. You know, like, well, why can't my family doctor do this or an endocrinologist or a urologist? And it has to do with most primary care doctors are just spread really thin. Medicine has become so complex in the last 15 years that you can't know everything. And so you're like, well, you know, your <laughs> testosterone is low. Well, according to this lab, it's not. Right. Well, you can't just look at a lab. You can't just say, well, you know, you're, you're 305 and you're fine. Well, if you're symptomatic and if you have all these problems going on, you're not fine. And so you can't just look at that. You have to look at the person in the entirety. And that's what differentiates me and my practice from – a lot of other people is that I look at you in the entirety. I have to understand, you know, what's going on. Are you having brain fog? You know, is it your diet or are you (laughs) having issues because your testosterone is low? Is your estrogen too high? So it's all about a balance. And 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 there's all all kind of stuff for our audience too. Like if you've had your head banged around a lot, chances are like I have traumatic brain injury. A lot of us do. And if you've had your head banged around, there's a really good chance that your pituitary gland is fucked. And your pituitary gland produces a chemical called prolactin, which kills testosterone, right? So there is, if, if you're out there and you're a veteran and you're having irritability problems, I guarantee fucking to you there's something wrong with your fucking brain and you need to go see somebody like this guy right here and deal with it. Yeah, and, and that's where it was suggested to me was yeah. by Drinking Bros. And yeah. they were like, hey man, you should look into this. And then I <clears> did, <throat> and, and again, shot down by my family physician who I- Well, they just know, don't have the expertise is what yeah, it is. I think you're right. I think the, it's it, like it, you're going into a car mechanic and asking to work on the circuit board and the computer in your car. Right. It's like, like, I know what it is and what it does, but I don't really know how it works or, or how to fix it. You know what I mean? I think that's what it is. I don't, I don't think yeah. they're dicks or anything. I just think they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And it's not that they don't, not that they don't know what they're doing. They just don't have the level of expertise yeah. and the level of training and the level of understanding and the depth of understanding because right. a good primary care doctor needs to know a lot about a lot of stuff. But when you start drilling down, you just you run out of bandwidth. Like There's only so much that you can learn. Yeah, sure. There's only so right? much that you can know. And a lot of doctors you know, are, are good from, you know, right, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Yeah. So these are my treatment options. A, I'm going to do androgel or I'm going to do this or I'm going to mm. do that. Well, after that, I don't know. Yeah, okay. that, that's, yeah, I mean, that's and not, they just kind of, th- and they're like, "Well, you're fine. Don't worry about it." And that's not the not sign. Fine. That's that's not like uh, 
good leadership is knowing when to hand the problem off to somebody else, in my opinion. Like, if you're, when you get out of your, and this is something that we learned at Black Rifle, too, because we all, it started really small, got really big really fast, mm-hmm. and then everybody's working outside of their core competency and stuff slipping through the cracks. So like, hey, you know what? This isn't what I'm the best at. So why don't we hire somebody to do this, and then I'll do what I'm best at. You know right. what I mean? I think it's, 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 no, it's no slight on the doctor. I agree with you. There's too much shit going on in a family care place for them to be dealing with this shit. And, you know, and there's stuff that, that people come to me and like, well, what do you think? And I was like, ah, ew. you know, this isn't what I'm good at. Right. This isn't where my expertise is. But I know this doctor that's really good at that. Let me call and get, them over to, get you over to see them. And that's how it should be. You know, it should be, it should be sharing. It should everyone be working towards yeah, yeah. the benefit of the patient. Exactly. You know, it's not a pissing contest out there no, between it's, it's doctors. A, Unfortunately, sometimes a, it is. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it is. And well, you just, know, the, all the problems that we're talking about with, with standard like uh, uh, family care practitioners right now. Imagine how bad it is the VA. Like all, all all of our fans that are out there using the VA, and we all know how fucked up that system is. Yeah. Uh, imagine that's what I went through when I first got out getting fucking MRIs and a goddamn uh, uh, spinal tap and all this other horse shit to try and lessen the, the pressure on my brain and to figure out why I'm pissed off all the time for no fucking reason. It took years, literally, to do what you've done in less than six months. I it mean, took I, me five years to figure this shit out. I have, I don't even know how many vets. And I got, I had three guys in the last two weeks that just moved to this area. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I can't even get into the VA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, it's three, four months to get in. Yeah. And, and even if I get there, I know they're going to make me go through all this <coughs> other crap to get it done. It's like the initial testing. Then you go to a specialist, which takes another two to fucking six weeks to see them. So this elongated process, and that's just the goddamn testing phase. That's not the treatment and then refinement of the treatment phase. And meanwhile, the whole time you're feeling like dog shit. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, like, so it's like a year. Yeah. Even if everything goes right in the VA, it takes about probably, I would say, eight to 12 months to get this kind of thing dialed in. Just right. based on their backlog and their their level of knowledge and all that shit, if, if that's a best case scenario. So sure. Why even bother with that? This is not. Well, you, you can talk more about this, obviously, but I don't, this treatment one you need it more than likely, and two, it's not that expensive. It really isn't. Yeah, go go over the cost <laughs> of it and uh, f- for the audience and what the difference is, because a lot of people out there hear the, hear the the phrase private doctor, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh shit, that's going to cost me a fortune. That's something for rich people. Yeah. 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 And, and it's not. It's it's not. And so there's you know there's private doctors, there's concierge doctors. I mean, there's a couple of different names that, that you can call them by. But you know the, the typical concierge doctor is you know it's five grand a year for the pleasure of my company. And then we're gonna and then we're <laughs> like gonna, a five thousand dollar retainer just yeah. to be able to go there. Get and you have, fucked. And you have access to the doctor, quote unquote, twenty four seven. Really? Yeah. That's, oh, actually that's not, not bad. The worst if they can bring thing, over yeah. the uh, yayo <laughs> at three in the morning. Yeah, let's but, go. Uh, let's yeah. go back to the sig- <laughs> let's get, I want Sigmund Freud as my fucking concierge doctor. <laughs> I'll lie on his couch and he can give me cocaine all day, all day long. <laughs> I didn't, I've never heard of a concierge not, doctor. I didn't know that was a real yeah, thing. That, He's not a cocaine dealer, by the way. I tried. No, no, try no, not no. to be. <laughs> try not to. Be. It's hard. It's tough these days. It is on the streets. Yeah, I called it into CVS. They said they wouldn't do it. Weird. It's had a call compound. Pharmacy or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't run my practice that way. Um, but the trade off I've had to make is I, I really don't want to get in a pissing contest with the insurance company because mm-hmm. I don't need some dude that has a high school education <laughs> in a freaking cubicle in Kansas City telling me how to practice because he's looking at some flow chart. Like yeah. I know what's going to work. Right. I know this person needs compound. Well, have you tried test. this drug? Like, dude, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're 12 <laughs> years old. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Is that really how it works? That's oh yeah. You, listen, oh, yeah. you know, you know your health, your private health insurance. Something somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of that money goes to administrative fees, and the rest goes towards medicine and doctors. Ah, uh, that's a, how fucking mad does that make that's you? That's crazy. I, my, my parents live in Vero Beach, Florida, uh-huh. and apparently the CEO of one of the big insurance carriers mm-hmm. just built a compound on the beach oh yeah they're, they're i mean how just, do you even get clearance to build a compound on the beach down there it's hard to get permits to build down there well, yeah and he built it right in, i guess if you're a gajillionaire it doesn't fucking matter it doesn't right? matter brother you can get around anything dude you can get i try i try to tell my dad i was like hey can you know are you gonna build a compound on the uh on the on the ocean and yeah. he was like no i had you and your brother yep yeah i mean it's like you, you know guys I, 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 I have children like I, you and your brothers were Expensive. Damn it. <laughs> do you ever and now send, I understand. Did he ever send I got, you a bill or anything? So my <laughs> if I ever have kids, 18th birthday, you're getting a fucking bill. So my dad has this thing called a palm pilot. Like he pretends like a palm pilot. Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, well, you know, your braces cost me $250,000. I was like, wait a minute. 
Last year it was two hundred thousand. Yeah. So it just keeps going up. And <laughs> oh, your yeah. first well, car was eighty seven grand. Inflation, so. interest, obviously. Yeah. 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 So he's like, You owe me four million dollars. <laughs> I'm like, Well, Dad, I got three grandkids. I gave you three grandkids. Is that good? He goes, Yeah, that's fine. It's an even trade. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it really is. Once you ha- once you give him the grandkids, so it's really about the... one point three mil per grandkid. Yeah. yeah. That's the but, value. But somehow, that's somehow I was. I forget, was it like four hundred grand to raise a kid now? These up days, until 18? yeah. Yeah. Jesus. When we were when we were growing up, it was like what one fifty to two fifty, yeah. and now yeah. it's like four to five hundred thousand dollars to raise. Let alone college, Jesus. All my kids are going to get athletic scholarships because hopefully they all take. They're all going to be mother. on the. Ju- they're all going to be on the juice, brother. Yeah, <laughs> they'll well, my- be dunking in by the time they're in fourth grade, dude. <laughs> Boom. Well, my wife was a uh, NCAA um, runner at, at NC State. Yes. So I'm praying they get. Wait, her didn't she just run a half marathon with fucking pneumonia? She did. In 128, is that true? 128 or 130? <laughs> yes, yeah, the Battleship Half Marathon here in Wilmington. Jesus oh, Christ, ran, crazy. By the way, as a, as a doctor, you can tell people not to run a half marathon. Don't with pneumonia. run half marathons. Yeah. Absolutely. I, with I mean, pneumonia. She, with pneumonia. Especially. And then she went to work. She's a radiologist. She went to work all week hacking up, talk, and then, you know, they have to dictate all day. Well, and I'm like, how the hell did you? Uh, she's, she's amazing. I don't know how she did it. After watching Chernobyl, I just finished that doc series on HBO uh, with radiation. Like, you know, yeah. if you weren't in Chernobyl, you're fine, probably. She's still, she's <laughs> she, fine. Dude, she's tough, man. She, uh, yeah. she, gave, she gave natural childbirth to our second baby. And, um, and, and like, was she just like biting on a piece of leather or something? What do you do for that? No, it's she a just, wooden spoon, right? She just she just was like, and, Jesus. And she, like ten Christ. minutes later, you know, she gets up. She goes, "I'm going to go take a shower." Ten minutes after giving birth to our second there's, child, there's she just gets up and like goes that. in the shower. I was like, I mean, I, I have like a hangnail, and yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, can you help me with this? And she's like, go. Rub some dirt on it. You'll be fine. I, always, <laughs> I always hear about people like that, and I'm like, dude, they don't exist. She's like, t- no, man. She's, no, they definitely she's exist. She's <sighs> tough. It's and crazy. She's smart, and she's a good mother and a good wife. And it's just like, what the hell? I did something right somewhere. Mm, somewhere. I don't know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fairly good looking dude. No, I, I'm, like, I'm like a seven. I like how you brag on her athletic ability, but you 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 were on full ride, weren't you? You played well, basketball. I, I went Division three, so they didn't give full rides. But D three, I basically got a full ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I think. They covered everything but like seven hundred bucks a semester. Of my That's college. amazing. What, what you were a basketball player? I was. Um, you were dropping down. I I heard you averaged like twenty points a game. Is that true? <laughs> I think my senior year I averaged, I don't know, seventeen or eighteen. That's not bad. That's not bad for D three. No, and then I, I played professionally for three years after that. No shit. Where at? So I started with the Rockford <clears throat> Lightning um, in the CBA, which is kind of like back then the CBA ended up kind of transferring into the D League. G League now. Was it like, like uh, the Will Ferrell movie? No, it's not. Tropic. <laughs> no, wait. What's it called? Uh, uh, the Tropics. Flint Tropics. Yeah. 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 What's the name? Uh, Semi-Pro. Semi-Pro. Yeah. Semi-Pro, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a Jackie Moon. fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. Jackie, Jackie Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was not. It was... Um, everybody loved everybody. It was crazy, man. It was so much fun. I had no business playing there. I was a good player and skill-wise, I was all right, but... If you average 17 points a game, that's pretty goddamn good. Yeah, I mean, it was all right. Yeah. It was okay. I mean, I... That's not bad for a white guy. I mean, how yeah. tall are you? Like six five. Shit. All right. That's not bad at all, dude. No, I mean it was, it was fun, man. I mean, my teammates from Stevens Point. I went to University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Stevens Point, yeah. And they've I, got a really good fish fry there. They do. They do. So you know what the bad part was? I grew up in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> very being, rivalrous. Being in central Wisconsin yeah. as a Bears fan. Yeah, so I was like, and the Bears were terrible. Man. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get like, nuked. Get, get, like, terrible get now. Kicked <laughs> in the nuts. Yeah, you, <laughs> fucking Trubisky's killing me, killing uh, me. I've been, I've been shit talking Trubisky Talk for two years, Trubisky. and everybody's like, "Oh, Trubisky's fine. He'll come." No, he's the worst. I think I, uh, yeah, nope. I, I have faith nope. in him. You're, I have faith you're, in him. you're a delusional ba- Bears fan. Yeah, I did, he and then sucks. I, I got he's off that done. bandwagon. I'm just happy I'm sitting next to the dick of picture. Oh yeah, right with the yeah with the big with the middle with the middle finger middle finger. What do you think about Cam Newton going to the fucking Bears? I've been hearing rumors about that. So, I think three <laughs> years ago, Cam Newton going to the Bears would have been really exciting. But, you know, he's, he, he plays so freaking hard and has put his body through so much. I'm not sure. You know, I mean, I can sit here behind this mic and say that. I don't know how much he's got left. You know, how, I mean, can he return to that level? I hope he can. Because I think a change of senior would be good for him. I think Same. so. I, mean, I, I would it, love him. It's going to happen. Bears. It's, he's not going to be there next year. There's no, no fucking way. They, no. They've already ruled him out for the rest of yeah, this year. Didn't they, like, I, I was reading something this morning. Like, didn't they bench him no, or he's something? On he's on the IR. Oh, he's on IR. His, right? He's yeah. on the IR, fucked. but whose decision was that is, I don't know. is the question. Um, you know, because they, 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 they got that kid in there. They still have a shot at the playoffs. Yeah. So they don't want the distractions. So I think they were like, hey, man. Why don't you IR it? We'll pay you the rest of the year. Wear your stupid clothes. Yeah, and then 
you can figure life out after we and cut Cam, you. You know, Cam wants to play. You know, he <laughs> want, he's he's like I, you know he feels he has still good good years left, and I think he does too. He's but. a baller. I mean, you, he's inconsistent, but you never really question his effort. I don't think. No, never, never. And you can't question his toughness either. No, he's. Did you have you been to Green Bay then? I have been to Green Bay. You mean Lambo? Yeah, Lambo. I have not been to Lambo. I refuse <laughs> oh, okay. to step foot in that fucking place. <laughs> really? I will not. As a so going to fan, school there, you, you know, never like, went to a game. At, no, at Lambeau. so Stevens Point's like an hour and a half, two hours away from Green Bay. Yeah, it's a, Stevens and, Point's what, like forty five minutes north of Madison, something like that. Yeah, it's yeah directly north yeah. of Madison, and it's a, it's a cool little town, man. It really is. Uh, but no, I refuse to go. I refuse to go to Lambo. I've driven by it because we play, we practiced in Green Bay a couple times, um, and I got some of my teammates and my really good friends are from that area. But I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh. They drove. They, <laughs> we drove by. We were on the bus and we drove by Lambo because uh-huh. they went out of their way to fucking go see Lambo Field, like twenty minutes out of the way. Sure, yeah, something to really see. And I was and I vomited honest. profusely until yeah. we were out of the. You know, I just. <laughs> It's strange because, like with with Michigan, like I, I I'm an Ohio State guy. Obviously, I hate nice. Michigan. But yeah. you talk about how great the stadium is and, and all that other shit. That, oh, it's the big house, the big house, all that shit. I went. I've been a few times. Um, you know, obviously for Ohio State games. Yeah, but that's I don't know. It's I'm just, surprised I, you never went and saw the Bears play there because that's a that's a I massive should, I, rivalry in that stadium. Would be pretty cool. To I see. should I should go and I probably at some point will. Maybe when when my little guy when AJ gets a little bigger. Maybe mm-hmm. wait until the Bears don't fucking suck. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be waiting a long time. I don't think so. They're, they're a quarterback shy and, and maybe one or two receivers. They're going to sign it. Antonio Brown. Maybe two. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine Antonio Brown and Cam Newton? No. no. On the same team? That would be, I think Cam Newton would kill that, him. That's either, that's either going to be <clears throat> phenomenal or it's going to blow up in if, the middle of if, uh, it. If Tom sure Brady one. and Belichick couldn't keep that guy straight, yeah. nobody can. Did you hear the Brady rumors? No. To Chicago? That was the other one. I would. I mean, either one of those guys, I think, would be fine. I mean, I'd love to. The Brady. There's no way. There's no way they're going to let him leave. The rumor is he wants Patriots. to prove he can win without Belichick. And Why? The system. Uh, Why? His his trainers are his Scientology. To be honest with you. Um, oh, what's that dude's name? His trainer's name? Yeah, it's the TB12 yeah, 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 bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And they Belichick and Kraft nuked him. Uh, coming to the the weight room and all that other shit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They let yeah. Brady train off off yeah, site. Yeah, that's right. And uh, why would you do that? It, well, I guess he was trying to implement these plans to the other players, and then we're getting hurt. Mm. And so they claim that the food, the diet of the TB12, mm-hmm. um, was not working for linemen and linebackers and all that stuff. Well, yeah, it works for a quarterback who weighs one eighty five. Why would it work for everybody? Right. Why would why would any treatment work for anybody? This brings us back to your shit. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. people think well, my testosterone and look the normal levels uh, that. that are prescribed are usually from uh they're based on age right so if you're a if you're an 80 year old man a 180 or 200 testosterone level is normal right? yeah yeah but definitely. if you're fucking 35 you just got a military and your test level is under 200 you're fucked right yeah i mean it's it, there's a different <clears throat> pathology associated with when someone's testosterone goes down right now and, i have patients and that, why as well right like i mean there's oh there's a ton of difference yeah. i mean i got I've, I've had guys as young as 28 come in my office now, it turns out after I question them and after <laughs> I say, hey, look, you know, like, I'm here to help you. Right. Like, unless you're honest with me, I can't help you. Yep. And they're like, well, I just ran gear for two years and I just came off it three months ago. I'm like, well, that would have been fucking helpful an hour ago when I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, and so what I do, I work very, very, very hard to have when the guys come in to feel comfortable. Mm. Because, this is, like you said, it's not easy to, to do. And they come, when they, you, know, you come into my office, it does not feel like a doctor's office. It's small. There's not a lot of staff. And I did that on purpose. Right. Like, you're waiting in the waiting room. Like, you know, you're waiting in the waiting room. I come out and get you. Yeah. You know, there's no nurse. There's no nurse or assistant or anything. It's just you. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. And, and, and I think that gives guys a level of comfort, like you talked about, yeah. where, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I came out of the military. You know, I'm a team guy, or I did this, yeah. or I did this many tours. No, my testosterone's fine. Well, it's not, but you got to be able and willing to talk and come in yeah, yeah. And, and, and bury your soul <laughs> to a complete stranger. Yeah. Well, I think... I think and, tr- like, and trust them. Right. Ten, ten years ago, when this started for me, I didn't know. I was 28 years old. Mm-hmm. I walk into the VA, and uh, they're doing all these tests. Uh, there's too much... Is little jelly finger? No. Uh, well, I should get that. Oh, I do that recreationally, but uh, <laughs> uh, just to get his Friday started. Yeah, it's well, it is Friday, so <laughs> yeah, we did do we did do we did do cavity searches to each other we before did, we came yeah. in here. Yeah, it was uh, we almost reversed sixty nine. Uh, that's where two guys <laughs> eat each other's asses at the same time. Yeah, uh, 
Well, I, you, I'm not going to lie. I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking burning my brain. The oh, more God. you know. Yeah. This is a fucking PSA show. So anyways, <laughs> I walk I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, God, we're 69. Oh, no, wait until we're, we're animating that conversation that we had on a previous show, and you'll see it soon. Yeah, you'll see it North by the South. end of this month, actually. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, it's oh, fucked yeah, yeah. up. We, it's we super did it on the show, yeah. At any rate, uh, so I walk into the VA, and... Uh, <laughs> My CSF, my cere- cerebral spinal fluid is 25% too high, which is not great, right? Your, your, your ICP pressure. Yeah, yep. I'm fucked, right? So they That's spinal tap it, and they start doing MRIs and shit, and they can't figure out why I have headaches all the time and all this other stuff. That's when they did that. Headaches continue, irritable, fucking foggy brain. I can't remember shit. I can't, like, I lose my phone in my car. I'm sitting in my car with my phone in my lap, and uh, I, I pull up to wherever I'm pulling up, and I'm like, where the fuck is my goddamn phone? Get out of the car. I have to search my car and find it. Turns out it's between the seat, but I never noticed it. I did this like three times in one week, and finally I was like, fuck this. So I went, to, uh, I went back to the VA. I'm like, hey, something's wrong with my head. Like, you got to fix this shit. <coughs> Excuse me. And they test my testosterone, and it's 130, and I'm 28 years old. Wow, like, that's, that's bad. My prolactin that's level was like 38 or some shit was like, or, or something. I don't remember what it was. It was super high. Yeah. What would high be? I mean, high is like up in the hundreds or the thousands. The thousands. So it was, I don't know what it, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was 138 or something. Yeah, I mean, that's or definitely high. It was, it was super fucking high. Like it should be, 38 is where it should be, right? In yeah, the, it should, in it the should 30s. be under 40-ish. Yeah, so it should be in the 30s somewhere. Mine was like. Yeah, that's high. Like that's really, 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 high. really goddamn yeah, especially high. Especially a 28-year-old man. Um, so <clears throat> they're like, yeah, so we're going to uh, give you this beta blocker for mm. that. But they didn't address the testosterone issue at all for two years. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, they're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, they yeah. let you walk around at 28 yeah. with a test of 130. Yeah. So they, so they, like, here you we're gonna, gonna we're like gonna, shit. we're gonna see if your fucking testosterone recovers just by doing this. I'm like, all right, cool. I didn't know. What the fuck did yeah. I know? Yeah. So I did that, and I'm just still. I want to die every fucking day. Like, not literally, but sometimes literally. Like you know. Yeah. Like it's you just get so fucking depressed, and you can't figure out. Why? You why? Can't figure out why? Everything yeah. in my life is fine, but I feel like shit, and I hate everything, and I'm fucking depressed, and I don't yeah. understand it. And that makes you feel crazy because if if your house is on fire, you can look at it and be like, "Fuck, that sucks." Yeah. But if everything's perfect, and it's like, "Why does this suck?" I don't understand. It makes you fucking crazy. And I honestly think that that's contributing to veteran suicide just as much as any of these other issues. So, finally, I start talking to people. I won't say their names because none of the shit I did was legal. But I started talking to people before people like him were around. Yep. And now, now there's like, uh, what do they call it, anti-aging clinics and mm-hmm. all this other shit around. Yeah. But back then there wasn't. So I just started talking to friends who were athletes. Like, hey, what are you guys doing for this? You get, you get your bell rung on a regular basis. And they're like, well, we do TRT. Mm-hmm. And even now, <clears throat> I'm just now finding out that, it's, that TRT alone is not enough. Like there's all these other chemicals going on in your brain. So... When you start taking TRT, your brain, or you start taking testosterone, your brain's like, well, I don't need to make that anymore. And right. I, don't, I don't need to block these things that are, that are inhibitors to TRT or to testosterone either, because this is all good now. It just tricks your brain. But there's like HCG and all this other bullshit that you have to be on, right? Yeah, and it, so it's, it, the brain is, is a, the body's an amazing thing. And so you have these biofeedback systems within the body that basically monitor your hormone levels. And so if you're putting in a bunch of end product, if you're yeah. putting in a bunch of tests, <clears throat> you, the, the part of your brain that produces the hormone that tells your nuts to make testosterone is going to be like, oh, man, we're good. We're cool. That's why you, when these guys are on all this stuff, their nuts shrink because there's just there's no production. So you can use things like HCG because guys that, I mean, we're all about the same age. Mm-hmm. So guys our age should not have zero natural production. Now, you still, at 130, you still had some going yeah. on. So you, gotta, you have to use things that, and use medications that can prop up Right. That natural testosterone. HCG does a really good job mm-hmm. doing it. You can also use Clomid. It's another good one. But you have to not it, – it's all about balance. And I tell my the, the male hormone patients I see, the female hormone patients I see, you have to understand balance. Mm-hmm. So I look at thyroid in guys. And, be, I mean, I've had – I got some guys that, you know, got popped around pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, their thyroid is off. Well, the cortisol levels are off. Yeah, yeah. The responses are off. And so you got to look at that dance because that's really where the, where the, where the, the art of what I do is, <laughs> is, is understanding that balance and being like, hey, man, you, know, you might need a little more test, right. 
But if I give you the same amount of test, yeah. your estrogen is going to pop up to 200. Yeah. And you're going to have all kinds of problems. So you got to either block that out or right. tone down the test or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah, right? you, you got to. And so there's, and then there's, you know, there's looking at things like Samoralin and HGH and how does that fit <sighs> into all of this? And it's all about when I have patients come into my office. Like HGH, by the way, is a naturally produced chemical yes, in your brain. That is, right? it is absolutely naturally produced. But here's the interesting thing about HGH. And you yeah. don't just, by the way, you don't just have to take HGH. There are chemicals you can take that make your natural production of HGH. Right. Increase, one right? of the one I use most is called Samoralin. Yeah, that's what Baker takes. Okay. And and, and the, the the reason I think this is important for a <laughs> lot of people at home is. You hear HGH with Stallone and uh, all these yeah. guys. And you People, think that and Barry is, Bonds, you think your head's going to grow and stuff like that. And, and, but you also think it's a miracle cure. Oh, yeah, yeah. W- what was not. interesting is when I came <clears> in and talked to you uh, mm-hmm. about it, and when it was just like, hey, I don't know what this is. People are saying this and this and this and this and then HGH, and you're like, eh. I don't know that you want to do that because that's going to raise everything inside your body, and y- it, you'll be more susceptible to things. Yeah, I mean, it... it it, 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 if you go on, there's a reason the professional athletes like it is it works. Right. But everything has to be done physiologic. You can't go crazy. That's like you hear these guys, these bodybuilders, and these guys that do testosterone for performance enhancing dropping dead of a heart attack at mm. 50 because they've done so much that their heart's gotten too big. Same thing with, with, with HGH. Done, if your levels are low, done appropriately, the research is very positive mm-hmm. in – Prevented and, and how it is preventative for the human body in terms of diseases, but done inappropriately, you know, if you have a cancer, if you have something like that, it's going to potentiate that cancer and it's going to make it grow. <laughs> so now you, you know, you're trying to to make yourself look good or feel good, and but you're not doing it the right way. I have guys that are, you know, listening to the, their buddies at the gym. Oh yeah, and I'm like, God damn it! Why <laughs> the hell would you listen to him? I just told you not to do that. Yeah, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. I have bodybuilders because I. I tell people, when you come into my office, what you did outside there is not my business. Sure. You know, you came to me for help. I'm going to help you. I do not do performance enhancing. I do not do any of that stuff. And if you want to do that, that's fine. You want to come to me. I'll run your labs. We'll talk about it. But I'm not going to write you jack shit because I, that's not what I do. Right. I, I make people feel better that feel like dog crap. So, you know, I get guys that come in and I'll be like, well, I'm on, you know, on Monday I inject this. On Tuesday I inject this. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're injecting something six times a week. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're injecting three different types of testosterone twice. Like at some weird cycle. Holy shit. Yeah. And you know, I, had, I had a guy Like in, in low dosage or? Yeah. Hmm. Well, define low. <laughs> like yeah. 100 I, milligrams of fucking cypionate three times or six times a week. That's a fucking ton. Well, that's, do, I've heard that before. Well, they'll do like cypionate, you know, like Monday, Thursday, and they'll <laughs> yeah. do propionate, and they'll do DECA and all this other stuff. Jesus like, when I came Christ, out of school, dude. when I came out of fellowship, I didn't know what any of that stuff was. <clears throat> sure. I mean, I've been educated. I have a lot of former professional bodybuilders that come in, and I've, I've been educated by them about this stuff. Well, this is the problem when medical science treats something taboo. People just think it's the boogeyman, and then people who aren't smart enough to, or people people that are smart enough to know that that's not true, but not smart enough to know what the actual drugs are supposed to do, get in way over their head and fuck themselves up. I mean, you can you know really, I mean? really hurt yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I've had guys come to me, and I'm just like, I don't <clears throat> even know where to start. Like, this is so fucked up, and your levels are so jacked, and mm-hmm. you're 31. The best is when I get these guys come in, and be like, oh, I want to have kids. So yeah. I'll do a sperm count, and zero. Yeah, zero yeah. sperm, not no motion, zero. And they're like, well, I want to have a kid. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I can fix it. I can bring it back. But as soon as you go back on the testosterone, you're going to kill it again. Sure. So if we're going to do this, this is the way we're going to do it. Otherwise, I'm not going to help you. And I've had maybe a dozen guys come in with that kind of situation. And I've been able to fix them all. But I'm like, you guys got to listen. Is it more important for you to go step on stage in an amateur show in Twiddle Your Ball Sack, South Carolina? Yeah. Or you want to be healthy for the next 50 years? I, that's, what, that's what we always say. Because if you do it the right way, you can be in great shape for the rest of your fucking life. Like, that's hey. what these drugs do. They are the drugs that make you feel young and virile. That's the whole point yeah. of all this shit. Like, it, it's not just for your body. It's not to make your body look great. It's your brain. It's everything. Your fucking uh, just homeostasis in general. All of this stuff is impacted by it. It's all hormones, right? That's yeah, all, all of it absolutely. is. And everything we do <coughs> in our American society, everything we eat, all the, it just continues to just beat down our endocrine system. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's, it's staggering. The steroids and, and food, the antibiotics oh, and food, the they crap, fuck you they up so goddamn Jesus. bad. And I mean, we're here in Wilmington, the shit they're dumping in the water. Yeah. It's like, holy Christ. That's yeah. why I drink bottled water. 
from, I, I, from another I, river that somebody's I, polluting. I, I've never seen this kind of pink bottled water, but I like it. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we drink bottled water, and then we drink bottled uh, liquor for every With every the, drink, with the drinking bros. It, it brings the percentage yep. of alcohol up at least 4%. With uh, the drink I think it uh, does, yeah. It's good every time. It's good every time. <laughs> what made you want to get into this, by the way? So, Because you know, being a professional athlete, mm-hmm. right, uh, where, where, where are you playing? So I, I played in the CBA. Uh, I went over and, and played in Israel. For a little bit. Oh, and that's then, dope. Um, really? Yeah, was, oh yeah, do you have family you over there? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. <clears throat> do, you have, do you have family over there? Or did you I just don't. Go over there? I don't. We just went over. I just went over there. To play. That would have been dope if you had family. It would, it would have been cool, but, you know, 97% of my family was killed in the Holocaust. Oh, shit. Because we're Eastern European. Yeah, yeah. You know, German, Hungarian. <laughs> and so they're all gone. You know, it was like three of my family members got out. Wow. That's yeah, a crazy story. I'll tell you some. I mean, yeah. it's a crazy. My. My, you can tell it now. I'll tell it now. So my, f- my dad's side of the family were horse farmers in Hungary. And so when all this stuff came down, my great-grandfather saw the writing on the wall and said, we got to get out. Mm. This is bad shit for <clears> us. <throat> like, we're, this is, no, no, no. We sell horses to the army. They need us. They're not doing anything. My great-grandfather was like, look, this is bullshit, and we need to get out. Right. So he sold everything he had for a bag of diamonds. He and my f- my grandfather was like, my dad said he's like nine, walked from outside of Budapest to the coast, bribing people along the way with diamonds. Really? So when they got to, the, when they got to America, you know, there was some, there was some money there. Uh-huh. And um, there were four diamonds, I think, that were left, and we call them the Frank diamonds. Oh, that's shit. Actually, we got to write a fucking book about that. That's my, my wife's that's incredible. engagement ring is the one that my father had. It, that was one of the actual so, four so, diamonds. So one of the actual you, four diamonds that came from the old country is what my wife. You wears could on seriously her make room. a screenplay out of this. Wow! Oh, it was it was insane. I mean, you know, my dad. Will, you know, he tells the story. It's just, it, it's <clears throat> it's staggering. And of course, the Nazis came. It was even before that. It was, you know, it was in the kind of the early 30s, mm-hmm. and the Cossacks came and just took yeah. everything. And then, you know, they didn't <clears throat> kill all the Jews then. Then yeah, the Nazis just, came and then they killed everybody. They just took all their shit. They just first, took. Yeah. I mean, literally. Like I want to go back and knock on the freaking Hungarian co- you know consulate and be like, hey, where's all my shit that you stole from us? Like it would be really nice to have a horse farm. My oldest daughter Cora loves horses. Yeah, I was like, hey, it'd be great to have a horse farm. But what if they, what if they just gave it to you though? You didn't have to ship that back. Move to yeah, fucking Budapest. Point. No, yeah. fuck, it's beautiful over there. So that's you know, so it's a, it's a it, it, it it's something for me. My Judaism, I'm very proud of. It's mm-hmm. a big part of me. And so when I had the opportunity to go to Israel and play, I, I went. So I went over there in the summer of two. 2001. H- had you been there before? I hadn't. It was the first time I'd ever gone. Gotcha. So I went for a, it's a, um, an Olympic style games called the, the Maccabi games. And so we went, I went with the team. We won the gold medal. Named after the Maccabee family that were in control of Israel after the death of Jesus and before the Roman empire moved in, by the way. Yeah. Look, look at this guy. Yeah. Um, um he's, he's all right. He's, so my, so, he's so right, he's right, I, I had that book. backwards actually. They were between the last, they were between the emperor and, and Jesus being born. They yeah. were in like the first century BC. Dan's read Maccabee. one book, so let's not my give bad. him too much. Well, credit, just the one, Dr. Frank. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I went and signed with the team, mm-hmm. came back, supposed to leave September 12th, 2001. Oh, to go there? Really? Yeah, I was supposed to leave September 12th. Oh, shit. I and was going to ask you if you were there. Needless not, to say, I did not go. And I'll never forget this. The coach called me that evening and said, what's going on in the States? And I was like, we're fucking under attack. Like, what the hell do you think mm. is going on? He goes, well, when is the airspace opening and when are you coming? <laughs> How the fuck should you And know? I was no, like, no, and I, I, remember, I remember I turned, <laughs> I turned like to my mom. I turned to my mom, who was a Jewish mother from the Bronx. And I looked and I was like, the coach wants to know when I'm going. And she just, motherfucker, you're yeah, not yeah. fucking going anywhere. And I told him. I was like, look, I'm not going. He goes, well, think about it and call me back tomorrow. Mm. I was like, I don't have to think about it. I'm not leaving. He said something to me that I'll never forget. He said to me, now you know how we feel. Really? How, how we're always under attack. Under attack, yeah. How we're always, people are always trying to kill us. And it, and it stuck with me. And I, I mean, I can remember it to this day. I'm not sure I would have wanted to be in Israel in the months weeks and months following 9-11 it wasn't i had friends that were over there yeah. playing and they were like no it's business as usual over here well it's business as usual is not great though well yeah i mean you in know some it, spots it depends on where it is this i is mean i would they, have been in, i would have been a little bit north of tel aviv this is you know, well that's coast. not bad, it wasn't yeah. bad no I was yeah. be in but this is before they built the wall there that was so it's not like the u.s wall it's not a border wall it's a wall to push the mortar attack back right so it's still in palestinian territory mm-hmm. 
So it doesn't really stop them from coming over. It just stops them from setting up mortars that are too close to the city so they can't bomb the city like that. So this was, back then, mortar fire dropping on Jerusalem, shit like that was pretty common. I yeah, mean, it happened com- a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so how, how long did it take for you to get that flight? Because I remember I was, I was in L.A., and I was supposed to go fly somewhere. I, I, never, I never went. <laughs> Oh, you didn't? No, because I so I played the year before for the Rockford Lightning in the CBA, which is kind of like the Chicago Bulls feeder team. Mm -hmm. And then I went back and played. I went back to the same team and then ended up playing for another Chicago team (coughs) called the Chicago Skyliners and then played um, my last season in the ABA with the Oklahoma Storm when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was my coach. Oh really? Oh, that shit, dude. was that was crazy. Talk about one of the most interesting dudes. I if he was met. my coach, I would just every day come into practice, be like, "Hey, can you sign this shit?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be putting that shit on eBay. So he, would, so he wouldn't sign anything for well, anybody. Of course not. He, he wouldn't. Signed, I no, didn't know, but he liked me because he knew I was going to medical school, and so we would sit down and have dinner and have these. <laughs> well, he's a smart guy. He's a, he's a brilliant yeah. guy. Yeah, and he signed one of his books for me. And I have so there's in the ABA there was um that we played with red, white, and blue balls. Yeah. yeah. So oh, we we've all seen fucking semi pro bro. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we um so he signed. I have there's three of these in the world. Signed Kareem Abdul Jabbar, red, white, and blue balls. The owner of the team has one. My father has one because he signed it for my dad because my dad played for the St. Louis Hawks in the fifties and sixties. And so Kareem, I gave an interview where I talked about that, and Kareem was like, "I want to meet your dad." Like I used to watch him when he was at the Garden, mm-hmm. and and so. My, he signed this for my dad. <laughs> That's cool. And then I have one. That's it. Those are the only three in the world. That's amazing. It's pretty crazy. So I left. I finished there. I, 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 um, we won the championship, which is cool. I drove from Oklahoma City to Chicago, picked up my shit, picked up my mom, and literally a week later I was a medical student at Jefferson Medical College in Philly. That was a really interesting transition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was hard. Why? What, like, what, what was the deciding factor of like, all right, I'm done with basketball. Mm-hmm. I want to go to medical school. <laughs> it was, I'd always wanted to go to medical school. And it just kind of worked out where I was able to play. And you um, were a fucking, you weren't like a, a PA or a family practitioner. You were a neurosurgeon, right? Yeah. So I, I, the goal, I went to Jefferson in Philly because the orthopedic department for Jefferson is called the Rothman Institute, which is considered by everybody to be the best fucking orthopedic department in the whole world. That's after David Lee Rothman, I believe. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. It, is. <laughs> it was. We all had long hair. I and, loved you know, him. Walking with microphone, yeah. freaking thing on. Man, That's how we did it. Um, you know, they take they took care of the Phillies and the Flyers and the Eagles, and um, so I wanted to be an ortho, so I went there. Well, it ended up not working out, so I ended up going and matching at Wake Forest um, Hospital in Winston-Salem. That's not Salem. a bad fucking school to go to. Yeah, it's so not bad. So I matched as a general surgeon because I'm not getting too much into it. You do this thing called the scramble, and it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But So I scrambled into a general surgery spot with the idea that I was going to go into their orthopedic department. They ended up not having a spot. So I did a, 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 one of the rotations my intern year in neurosurgery. And I was like, this is actually pretty cool. So... My second year, I jumped into neurosurgery and, and did basically what ended up being two years of neurosurgery. I like how you casually say I jumped into neurosurgery. Yeah, well, yeah, like had a weekend off, yeah. just decided to cut some brains up, no big deal. Like you're switching from an art major to yeah. communications. <laughs> like, yeah, I just decided to jump on into that. And it, was gr- and it was the best thing and the worst thing I've ever done. And it wasn't the hours. It wasn't the stress. It was the constant badness. You never had a good day. There was, you know, you saw the. Why 11, is that though? Because every there was no non neurosurgical emergency, like you know, you come in with the eleven month old that some schmuck threw against the couch because he wouldn't stop crying as shaken baby syndrome, or the four year old who had a seizure, and the parents are like, oh, that's no big deal. You do an MRI of her brain; she's got an inoperable brain tumor. Now you got to tell the parents that he's going to be dead in three months. It's never good. It's never. And it, and I was like, it. I'm a very positive person. Mm-hmm. And it, it was literally sucking the life out of me. And so I, I, I left. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I, I left after my third year and did a fellowship in neurorehabilitation, which I loved. Stayed on while my wife finished her fellowship. And then I tried to, you know, what, what do I want to do? You know, why did I really get into medicine? I'm like, well, I actually want to make people fucking feel better. Mm-hmm. So my brother, my brother Brian, went on TRT. God. 10 years ago now. Mm-hmm. And he was like, look, you need to look into this. And we did a lot of hormone stuff. Obviously in neurosurgery, we did a lot. We <clears> did some regenerative stuff in the fellowship I did. 
And so that's so four years ago I opened the Frank Institute. Really? And this is, and it's yeah, it will be four years <clears throat> next week. Ah, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And it's we'll give you a bottle of Luke Belair to take with oh, you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um my, my wife's pneumonia is better. Maybe we'll <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah, we'll toast, toast to it. <laughs> she's she's ran a 128 half marathon. She's pretty it now. I think, I'm sure pretty, she's fine. Uh, she's uh, she's <clears throat> So, and I love it. I mean, I go to work every day, and I'm like, I get to make someone better today. Mm-hmm. Like, look at you. Like, I try not to look at you, but look at you. Yeah. Um, it's hard not know, to. I'm a beautiful man. I get it. You are. It's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to get, see. Once you get lost in these eyes, <laughs> there's no coming back, I just, I, just threw, I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> um, but, you know, you guys come to me at their lowest. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, I don't know where else to go. No one will help me. Will you help me? And I, and I men and women, and I fix them. It's it's actually it's su- crazy. It's super tragic because it's such an easy thing to fix. It is like it truly is. Not that your job is easy, but I mean, like you with your wealth of information and knowledge and and the testing you've done over the years, it is not like fucking rocket surgery to <laughs> fix this problem. <laughs> My brothers just say it's not brain surgery. Yeah, I mean it's but it's not. It's probably yeah. technically easier than what you were doing before from a technical standpoint, it, but it affects so many people's lives and it fucks you up so bad and it's that easy to fix. And just because people don't have the right information, they don't know, a lot of people don't know that these options even exist for mm-hmm. them, right? Especially if you're stuck in, in uh, family care or, or the VA particularly. Like if you're stuck in these like roundabout systems that are always giving you the runaround, you, don't, you may not even know options like this exist. But it's so no, you, you it's don't. so simple, and it takes yeah. no time to turn around what could be like it's a life altering thing. It really is because I've dealt with it. You've dealt with it. A lot of our friends have. <clears throat> and, and and I came from a city because look, Wilmington's a small town, obviously. Uh, but I came from Los Angeles, mm-hmm. where you know I had this. I had a great doctor. Um, we I, I, to this day I don't even know his real name, and we just call him the Rock Doc. Um, any time of night, day, whatever. He was cool he, like he, you. He brought you rocks? Wow. Well, <laughs> he, he, he was just a rad guy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but any time of day, if I was on set, wherever I was, he would, you know, I could call him. He would show up, whatever was wrong with me. Throat issues, if I was getting sick or a cold or whatever it was, he, he would uh, come and do it. But he was also a cool guy that I, I felt like I could talk to and open up to. And at least have a real conversation and be like, all right, I'm, I'm getting through this. One of our biggest sponsors on the show is uh, Roman E.D. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's kind of how they started, too. Like they, yes. The, son, the, the dad, I think, yeah, and the son were right? both, yeah, yeah. The, they were having issues of their own. Like, hey, let's just figure this shit out, man, because nobody's doing this shit. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things that where dudes don't want to go in and tell <clears throat> their family doctor or a, practi- you know, or, or a woman or whoever it is, right? Hey, man, I can't get my fucking dick up, right? So they've taken over Viagra in the market. It oh, yeah. just gets shipped to your house. There is no doctor visit. You can just get boner pills in the mail. They're right? all. I mean, they 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 have they have done. A, they built something really nice. Yes, like really get nice. Roman dot com forward slash drinking bros uh, is ours. Yeah, and it's we've, good. We've they're with us for the whole year. And the, it, we had a dinner with them in New York, and they were like, "Dude, you guys are killing it for yeah. us." And I was like, "Well, to be honest." Guys don't talk to each other about this type of shit. They'd rather go and do this. No, they stumbled upon the perfect business model, I think. Right. But the problem with what you and I have (laughs) and and what a lot of people have is you can't just call somebody online. You've got to go in and see a doctor. You've got to go in and talk to somebody about it. Yeah, keep in mind that if you're having erectile dysfunction issues, chances are it's a symptom of something that's wrong with your body. It's not just that your dick doesn't work anymore. That's not a thing. Like yeah yeah Roman is good and honestly I take it recreationally I don't give same I, and all we the time. Uh, we have no problem admitting it no, on the show like, I don't care uh, well just I take do that it, do shit it just to do it yes yeah. all the time and I don't think I don't have a problem with my dick no. No, what I have a problem with is my hormones <laughs> for for real no I mean you're, and the way I was mentally right. feeling about my life however <laughs> I can't call that in I can't get that online I mm-hmm. can't do this type of shit um uh and, and again which is why you do what you do is so mm-hmm. important where and, it's like all right. Uh, you know, even me, I look, I debated with him about even doing this show. Yeah. Because there's there's certain things as dude you don't want to open up and admit of like, man, from the outside world and, and from me knowing it as a person, like, my life is great. Fuck, my book is goddamn nine weeks consecutive on the New York Times bestseller list. Amazing wife, kids. My dad loves your book, by the way. Oh, thank you. And by the way, it's, it, I, I want to tell you guys that I definitely do read that to my kids as a bedtime story. <laughs> yeah. And it's we'll not let, at we'll all weird. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let Matt know that you're doing that. So, yeah, 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 so, yeah, so yeah. that picture proud. I posted of the kids <clears throat> reading, 
that's those are that those are my kids. Yeah, yeah, right. That's the one that's exactly, on the Drinking yeah, Bros. Yeah, 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 those we, are my we kids. Posted it. Yeah, it's really funny, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, but uh, again, you you go through all of this great stuff, and mm-hmm. and you can't figure out what is wrong with you, and like, um, that's why it, it is. It's hard. It was hard to open up and do a show like this where it was like, hey, man. I think a lot of people probably at home are going through the same thing. They just don't know how to verbalize it. I know for a fact they are. Just based on the the amount of fucking concussion syndrome that there is in the military and first responder community, I know for a fact they're having these problems. And I know that people are also, their first step is to go uh, see counselors and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. You, you may need some adjustment. But uh, to me, that's like having a car taken into the shop to get it, the paint buffed out when there's no fucking wheels on it. Like, if the mechanics of that motherfucker is not working right, the psychological part is never going to get fixed. And, like, and, there's no amount of psychiatry that's going to fix your hormonal issues. That is not how this works. And, and the, other th- the other great thing about you <clears throat> was you go, hey, man, I, I can't just give you shit. Like, you've got to go get labs done, and then I will look at those labs, and then we can work from there. You're not going to come in and just guess what you think is wrong with yeah, you. Like, no, it's, it, it, you, have, you have to understand the pathophysiology of what's going on. And there's, you know, another big thing another, that the guys have problems with is there's this misconception of being on testosterone. Because we always hear about, oh, guys are juicing, you know. They're, like they're, Lyles Alzado. Lyles yeah, Alzado exactly. fucking died of cancer yeah. fucking cause, from steroids. That was like D-ball and shit like that. Yeah, right? I mean, they it crazy. was, but people don't know the difference between TRT no. and D-ball. Right. People are stupid. And there's this misconception <clears throat> that, one, I'm going to grow hair everywhere, <laughs> or I'm going to get jacked, or I'm going to punch through a wall or any of that stuff. It's all about what is the optimal physiologic mm-hmm. dosing. That's where you need to be. Where should your body be? Right. That's where I get you to. Yeah. You're not going to have, and I have guys come in all the time that are like, God, I'm in a shitty mood and I snapped at my kids and mm-hmm. you know, I, I hate my job and they come in and I get their levels where they should be. And they're like, I feel great. I'm calmer. I'm nicer. <laughs> yeah. I sleep better. And I'm telling you, that's ve- exactly what happened to me. I'm yeah. telling you in the veteran community, people are, pe- people with non-visible scars are very, uh, I don't know if shame is the right word. But it's hard to fucking walk around and complain about your life when it's going well and you've got all your body parts and your buddies are missing their fucking legs just because I don't feel good today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's hard to talk about that for people. Like, I don't know. I'm just in a really bad mood, man. Oh, yeah. Well, my legs are gone. It's like, well, yeah, those are just two different problems. It doesn't mean you shouldn't go get yourself checked out. Everybody's different. (laughs) Everyone has different issues. You know, it's and I try to, to tell guys that when I'm out just in the community talking and you know, I, I give talks all the time all around Wilmington, the surrounding area. And I tell people, I'm like, look, if you got a question, you want to talk to me now, here's my email address. Yeah. Shoot me an email. And I get emails from people I did talks with a year ago. I'm like, hey, man, you know, I can't take it anymore. I have this question. So I try to make it informal. I try to take the stigma away from it. And I'd be like, look, we're just two guys talking. I have the ability to potentially help you. Mm-hmm. Let me see <clears throat> if I can help you. You know, if it's not your, your testosterone, then I'll tell you that. And if there's somebody else you need to see, great. There's some good people here in Wilmington. Mm-hmm. But if you, it, you came to me with a problem, and I'm pretty sure I can fix it, and I, I'm pretty sure I can figure out what it is, let me help you. And most guys are like, you know, it, it's almost disarming yeah. in a way that, <clears throat> that, you know, hey, guys, guess what? You know, my brother is on testosterone. You know, my, my dad's got low testosterone. Like, my testosterone's not the greatest. You know, I just had my labs done last week, week before. <laughs> yeah. Mine's low. So... You know, and so I, I know how you feel. Like, I've been there. I've been at the top. I've been the alpha male. I've mm-hmm. been, you know, professional basketball player, <clears throat> neurosurgeon, kind of point of the spear, and where it's a big swing and dick situation everywhere you go. So I've, I know that, and then I've gotten knocked down to the point where it's like, hey, you know what? I think I need some help. You know, so I can, I can understand that, and I can relate to guys. There's no, there's no shame about this. It's just the way it is. No, it's like, hey, would you be ashamed if you had a fucking cold? Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah, take exactly. medicine and shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. and get better, dude. Yeah. It's really that simple. It, it is. And like, um, and you, you were right. Going back to what you were saying of like, dude, it is not the cure to get jacked. You're not going to have a fucking six pack immediately. You're not going to grow. I, I, dude, I have no hair on my body. That's a fun fact about me. I don't have one single chest hair. Never really? have. Never. I barely have arm or leg hair. That you don't grow hair. The you hair on do. your head is magnificent, though. It is, and I've yeah. always had that mane. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful mane. It was but all, all the summer. things that you hear, uh, the <laughs> stigmas around it, of like, oh, you'll do this and this and this, it's not true. What I can definitely tell you is mentally, I feel better, and I'm trying to, you know, physically match what I was matching before, where mm-hmm. it was just, you know, I'm, look, I'm not, I'm no longer putting up 315 in the gym. But uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be as big as I was just to, you know, oh, fuck. 
Well, I can get past this on my own, dude. I'll work it out of my system, dude. <laughs> right. You know it'll help me, man. Putting up 315, telling everybody to fuck off at Planet Fitness, you know? I'm like, no. It, it just wasn't <laughs> It wasn't the healthiest I could be. Now, in college, yes, that was that's my dead. best hey, life. Yeah, that's back when it, you, can, you can get in pissing contests with everybody. Yeah, and I, look, I reverted back to that of college where it was just like, all right, yeah, man, fuck, let's go fight somebody. Let's, you know, lift as much as we can, but that, it's not helping you mentally. I should, I should say that, by the way, when uh, um, I was leaving this morning, I was telling my kids that I was going to do the show today. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm like, remember the man we saw at the pumpkin patch? <laughs> my, my middle daughter is like, oh, the one that picked up the pumpkin you couldn't pick up? Yeah. And I was Ooh. like, ain't that some shit? Well, that, <laughs> I, was that like, I was born with. That's <laughs> God. I was like, uh, yeah, that's the man. That's the man that picked up the pumpkin I couldn't pick up. I, could have, God's I plan. just chose not to pick it up. God's plan, yeah. I was there, you know? And um, <laughs> like, I'm a very strong person. I was so. there for moral support. <laughs> <laughs> well, they like, uh, they picked like the biggest damn com- pumpkin on the pumpkin patch. The kids did. Yeah, and you know my middle daughter's only like thirty eight pounds. And so I, it, it was probably, it was probably a eighty, maybe one hundred twenty pound pumpkin I lifted with one arm, but no big deal. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, he actually just swung his dick down there and just be like, yeah, hey, yeah. Go. Just, just lassoed it and fucking tossed <laughs> just it. Just lassoed it, put it in the truck. truck. Yeah. I'll tie it to the roof for yeah. an extra fifteen. <laughs> um, what made you choose Wilmington, by the way? Because you remind me of the doctors I used to have in Los Angeles, and like not to shit on small towns, but you don't get the kind of medical care you do in a big city because you don't have that many options. Right, where it feels a lot like Doc Hollywood, where it's like, oh, hey, man, that is that? Is that oh, I love the movie. Uh, I love, love big Michael J. Fox fan. Um, but but um, you don't have that many options. So the right. people you do or you're around, you're like, all right, cool. I was very shocked to find you because you reminded me of, of an L.A. doctor. It was just like, hey, man, here's what's going on. Why don't you, why don't you kick your pants off? Let's have a chat. You know, you want a cigar? It's not going to hurt you. AIDS is a myth. You don't need condoms. Like, that's the way it was in LA, where it was like, oh, all right, cool, man. I'm I was going to be like, oh, shit, that's not how you think my office is. No, 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 not like, at all. <laughs> not at all. That's it's how it like, was in LA. Like, like, was like, like, my brain is spinning as you're saying that. I was like, oh, God, I hope that's not. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had asked that early on to a doctor in LA. That's why I bring that up, where it was just like, hey, man. Because uh, he was like, I was sexually promiscuous, are you? And I was like, well, what's the top level? <laughs> um, and he goes, and I'm like, should I be worried about AIDS and all that? And he goes, no, it's a myth. He goes, look. Well, he said it's a myth. He goes, look. Yeah, it's fine. He goes, uh, are you having any gay orgies? I was like, no. And he goes, needles? Are you sharing needles? And I go, no. And he goes, you're fine. <laughs> totally fine. That was a real response from a Los Angeles doctor. That. Dead serious. The but they have a different attitude towards life and the way you treat people and all that other stuff. Yeah. You're the first person I met here who wasn't like, I mean, I had a, I had a fucking guy at my family place who was just like, tried to talk me off of medicine all in general. I was just like, I'm super holistic or whatever. I could tell this guy just get out of rehab or something. <clears throat> I was just like, look, don't spread your bullshit on me. Holistic. What made you choose Wilmington? Cause you could be, you could be working in every major city you wanted to. I could. And my wife, um, coming out of her fellowship, was extremely highly recruited. Um, her fellowship was one of the most sought after in radiology. And she literally just was like, we can go anywhere. Isn't the Hanover Hospital here like one of the top teaching New hospitals Hanover? in, yeah. the, in it's, the country? It's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good <laughs> one. But the, the radiology group that she works with mm-hmm. needed someone with her expertise, specifically her training protocols. So... It, I mean, we were sitting down and we we're like, well, where do, where do you want to live? Mm-hmm. I was like, let's go back to Chicago. And she's, you know, she's from Asheville. And she's like, we're not going anywhere where there's snow. And I was like, okay, well, where do you want to live? And she said, well, I love Wilmington. Let me see what's open down there. Had she had been here before? Yeah, because she, she would vacation down here. Because she okay. went to NC State, so they would come down here. In 20 years, this place is going to have like 80 million people. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. God damn it's it, one dude. of those towns where if you figure it out, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, yeah. man. Because uh, the, the construction here is crazy. Oh, yeah. I tell people all the time, I'm like, this sucks here. Don't come here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> well, they say the fuck we're, away. We're, we're, actually, we're actually running for a New Hanover County School Board. Uh, are you guys really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I am going to vote for both of you. Yeah. 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 So we, we, our paperwork's due on, on December 3rd. We're going to do that. You yeah, because there's that. a lot of small town pe- values. There's, yeah. there's awesome. a lot of good old boy bullshit going on here, and I don't play that. I fucking Same. It. And I, I think it's I, poison in politics. And, and to, to that point, like the positive of it is you can change and have other ideals and other things like that, and you can have great doctors here. Mm-hmm. You can have nice things. Yeah. Um, so it was your wife that made so, it. So yeah, so she got it. She actually, I'm trying to remember exactly what the, the situation was, but I think she emailed the HR person at the group she works at now and said, are you hiring? And then sent her CV or sent her resume. Mm. And they were like, 
can you come this weekend? So they rolled out the red carpet for us. I mean, it was just, and we're walking down the beach. The sun's going down. My oldest daughter was like 18 months at that point. We're pushing her in the stroller. And I look at her, I'm like, we'd be fucking morons not to move here. Yeah, I know. It's gorgeous. And so, and, and, that's, and that's where we are. I mean, never, a good old boy from Chicago. Yeah. If I ever thought I'd be willing to, I had never been to the South. I mean, like my parents live in Florida. So, you know, from Indiana to, to Florida, that's uh-huh. all just kind of one mess of yeah, yeah. south of the Mason-Dixon. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I had really never been there. Yeah. And so now I'm like, I want to live in Wilmington, Wilmington North Carolina. Wilmington is not exactly the south, though, really. No. But it's, it, will, I, it doesn't I lo- feel like I it. Ten, it is. Ten, years, <laughs> ten years from now, it'll be, like, unrecognizable. It's going to be like Boca Raton. The south. Yeah, yeah. I love living here. Imagine, a, imagine, it's, it's imagine, a, imagine a Jewish guy carrying diamonds around and talking about Boca Raton. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Oh, it's like we're in a Boca, fucking bizarro world here. Del Boca, Del Boca Vista? <laughs> Let's oh go my, down Boca. Oh, my go God. Oh, we got to go to Boca. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, but, so, by the way, I was the same man coming out of uh, Los Angeles where, you know, wife was pregnant, wanted to move somewhere cool, gorgeous uh, that we liked. And I was it's like, look, beautiful, I yeah. can commute and do whatever <laughs> I need to do in LA and uh, it was gorgeous here same way and I was just like oh shit I'd never been here it's the only bad thing and it's getting better but the only bad thing is and I'm glad you guys are doing this the schools are not good no the yeah. schools no I grew up in Spurman Chicago <clears throat> and they filmed Ferris Bueller's Day Off at my high school like our high school was consistently ranked number in the you know in the top 100 in the country or mm-hmm. in the state of Illinois <laughs> and occasionally in the country so there were no private schools where, where I grew up you know there was one Catholic private school and you only went there if you were a fuck up Right. Or you know, your parents wanted to send you there. Pre- so pregnant, there, are two, pregnant, there pregnant are two girls. Catholic schools. Yeah, no girls. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that just wasn't a thing. And I get here, and I start looking at the schools. Now, yeah. we moved here seven, God, yeah, it'd be seven years, seven years ago. And things have astronomically changed in seven years, and it's oh, a yeah. lot better. But when we first moved here, I was like, we have to send the kids to private school. I don't like my kids that much to send them to private school. I don't either. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> sending kids to private school, like de- I think it feels like it, d- it deprives them of exposure to certain yeah. things that they need to be exposed to as children. And everyone... Different sorts of people, different yeah, classes, different races, different yeah. rela- all this stuff. You need to meet all those people as early as possible. Yes. So I you're agree. not an asshole when you get older. I agree. Exactly. And, like, you know, <clears throat> I, I would say Wilmington, the, the schools, like the elementary schools, I know your kids go to a good one. Um, mine... <laughs> do currently unless this the redistrict happens but so oh man it's uh, gonna be crazy eh, it's i'll be we'll both be on the board next year so it won't really matter but um well, I, can i bribe you guys directly yes yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah you can sweet i don't like know it. if we're allowed this <laughs> <laughs> we've already started off on the run <laughs> yeah we'll be bribed. we're coming out of the we'll gate hot, brother. Yeah, yeah no but uh it, it's one of those things <laughs> where I, I grew up you're in welcome. public schools yeah, i want my kids right. to go to public schools right. i don't want to pay for private schools. that's why i got out of los angeles i don't really believe in the idea of a private school i don't like that like i i'm not like i look that's a very democratic mindset i think like politics wise because yeah. they're, they're not huge fans of that shit either and uh, but I don't like I don't like it I don't like the idea of separating people out by class and wealth by and socioeconomic like ability. Yeah, it doesn't make any you, sense to yeah. me because we all have to know each other and work together. In the military, there's rich people that fucking just decided like to join. There's affluent people who decided to join the military. Every race, creed, fucking religion, all that shit. And you learn that like at the end of the day, nobody really gives a fuck about any of that. Just do your goddamn job. Yeah. And if people can't learn that lesson early on in elementary schools and shit like that, then we're just going to, like, the division in this country is crazy. We can't have a, con- like, <clears throat> Milo and I get on the show and talk shit to each other, and then right after the show, we're, like, we're just shooting shit. Yeah. Having a good time. Yeah, great, yeah. great dude. And, uh, but people in the comment section are like, oh, God, you guys fucking, do you hate, do you hate religion? I'm like, just relax, dude. It is yeah. possible we, to we disagree can have, on. Yeah, yeah, we can have all sorts of conversations. And still man. be friends in real life. Yeah, but you can't, you have to learn that lesson early, because right now, <clears throat> In, in our political climate, one little thing. Actually, Ben Shapiro just did a great piece on this yesterday. I don't know if you saw it or not. But he was talking about how, like, he spent 40 minutes talking about how the alt-right are a bunch of fucking knuckleheads. Right. And then some protest group came in and started calling him alt-right. And he's right. like, you realize I just spent the last 40 minutes decrying the alt-right. And now yeah. you came in here to protest me as an alt-right person. Do you see how stupid and you alt-right are? alt-right hates him. Yeah, they, yeah, hate, yeah, they, they fucking hate, hate him. Hate him. Yes. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, that level we had, of we had lunch with him uh, with Ben Shapiro. Yeah, oh, yeah, what was it? A couple months ago, it was in March, I think, for yeah. like three hours. He yeah. was a great guy. We, That's we, he's barbecue to be a very whiskey, interesting man. dude. Uh, he's very, he, very interesting dude. Very smart. <laughs> him uh, and Michael but, Knowles, or he, my, I love Michael Knowles too. By same, the way, same. Uh, but anyways, yeah, they're if, if you don't learn how to fucking 
you don't if you don't learn conflict resolution with people who are not like you at an early age, then you turn into these assholes who can't like your brain isn't capable of hearing a differing opinion and, and just accepting like, oh, OK, like maybe for for somebody somewhere that's true and it's not true for me here where I am. But those two things can coexist. Just fucking relax. Yeah. Right. If you don't learn that early, I feel like it's hard when you get older. I completely agree. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in, a, in an affluent suburb of, of Chicago. Um, Where at? What was the name of it? In Nor- I grew up in Northbrook. Yeah, you did. And so, uh, I knew but it was you know, coming. but I, but I played, you know, I played basketball with everybody from yeah. You, Vince Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> did he? Go? He's not from Northbrook. Ah, uh, I, I don't. I'm no, not. he's from he's from uh, Glen, um, Hi, was it Highlands or he's from Highlands? Is he from Highland Park? He's from somewhere over there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, so you, you have to expose. And that's why I try to teach my kids. And it's the biggest issue I have with where they are now is, you know, it, there's no diversity. And Wilmington's a very... You had two doctors, though, in the family. Yeah. So, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but you know, it's... it's a, and I agree. The, the, the country has become just so flash boiled both ways like mm. can't we all just i mean it's stupid can't we all just get along like okay i don't agree with what you're saying that's fine but guess what you can do that if you want to go and marry a sheep if you want to dye your hair blue if you want to cut your foot off yeah god bless you that's fine that's not my choice but i'm pretty sure this is a free country and you can do whatever the hell you want so if you want to do that that's fine i respect your choice why can't we just why can't we learn that everyone gets the damn panties in a while about everything like, it's a, but it's a relax. really simple conversation there might be three instances in your kids elementary school life from grades like from preschool to, to like grade eight or whatever before they go to high school where they're like hey i saw this at school today. it was kind of weird like oh yeah they believe this and that's fine yeah. oh, okay cool and that's yeah. fucking it yeah. forever mm-hmm. it happens a couple of times in your life yep. over the course of 10 years when you're a child and then that's it forever you're just like whenever that happens as an adult you're like oh they just believe different stuff it's cool and even on this show like uh, look we have all walks of life on like yeah. w- with Milo or uh, look I, we would have Trevor Noah on or whoever wants to come on yeah. I don't give a fuck even Beto we hate Beto we hate Beto O'Rourke but we would have him on the show I think he needs, be, I'd be, he needs I'd, some I'd, testosterone I think he needs to see you I'd actually, I'd actually like to talk to him I, I would, think that'd be an interesting conversation just to listen to him away from the cameras away yeah. from everything and just be like hey man like, what do you think what's like, your real opinion on? I think he needs some tests I think he he's seems not, like yeah, I'm not going to say anything, you know, but <laughs> medically, yeah, yeah you know, it's advice. just it's <clears throat> it's one of those things. It's like you, I, I saw and I forget where it was. I saw a research study from my was it was one of my friends posted it, and I forget exactly what the situation was. But they looked at liberal males from the age of 28 to 35, and their average testosterone was like 275. Yeah. I don't know if that Which, was Which, by real. the way, it 275 was, would be on par with somebody that's in their 60s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for a 28 to 35-year-old, it should be like seven, 800. So I just, I, and I, like I said, I don't know how much of it was bullshit and how much was true. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure most of it was bullshit, <laughs> but it was an interesting, it was like, hmm. Well, you can tell if you see a guy with his jeans rolled up at the bottom, for every <laughs> roll, it's an extra 100 points of testosterone. I better, I better unroll my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to start tucking them down, tucking them down. Uh, Dr. Frank, this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. This is somebody that has inspired you, somebody that helped you become the person you are today. Uh, and it can be anybody in, in your life or over the course of your life. Wow, that's a really, <clears throat> really difficult thing. Mm-hmm. I've been so incredibly lucky and blessed to have so many people that have actually given a shit about mm-hmm. me. Um, I, I almost don't even know where to start. I mean, I think the, the probably the people that have had the greatest impact on me, and not to be cliche, but my parents and my brothers. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 and I said this at my brother's wedding. You know, I never had to look down the hallway for a hero. They were right there. You know, I never, I, I didn't have to look for a great role model as a father. My dad was right there. You know, I didn't have to understand how to love and be compassionate and, and, and bring a family together because my mom was there. You know, like, I never, I, I never had to look for outside of my home. And I realized that's not a, a usual thing. And then I can go through all the people that helped me along in my life. Sure. All the people that helped me in basketball. All the people that helped me through medical school, through college, through neurosurgery, through transitioning out of that, meeting my wife and what she's been and and how much she's meant to me and how much she's helped me become a better person. I I can't. I mean, I I can't just give one one person. I I can tell the I can count on the one hand the number of people that have shitted on me. Yeah. And I, I almost learned more from that. 
But I mean, I just that's a really to be honest with you, that's a really hard question. No, to but that, that look, that that's a, that's a great answer. And like a, a lot of people who've come on this show, I mean, we're you know obviously past five hundred and something episodes at this point. A lot of people say their parents or their brothers, and uh, hopefully that's the way it probably should be. Where yeah. it's just like, hey, you had a great childhood, you had a great upbringing, and 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 you're amped about that. Um, but sometimes it's not. So I mean, I just hope that my kids look at me. And be like, hey, you know what? He he did the best he could. You know, he loved us. He 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 tried to provide a good example. I mean, that's that's what I want out of life. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just I want to be someone that people are proud of to know that people are like, hey, you know what? He did it the right way. And you know, maybe if I can help a couple people along the way, I did well, something right somewhere. You, Martin Luther King said this. He said, you got two hands for a reason: one to lift yourself up, and one to lift the next person up with you. It's a very simple principle by which I live my life. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I, you certainly helped me. Yeah, so, it's my uh, pleasure, man. My I, I'm, pleasure. I'm grateful to have met you. And uh, I'm grateful <clears> you came <throat> in and spent your time and did the show today. I know it's probably weird where, where you were like, man, I don't, why is this guy asking me to come and it's, do the show? Uh, it's awesome. And then you man, show up, you. there's a signed OJ Simpson jersey on the wall. <laughs> the Fletch, the Fletch thing was actually, I, so I said that to my brothers. Who, so it's really my goal in life, I should have prefaced this, is to use movie quotes. In everyday life, six foot three, six foot nine. He's actually, six five with the afro, six nine. Six, pretty good dribbler. He comes in his team down by two. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fucking Fletch shit. Messiah, so funny, dude. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I, so I, I, I sent them a picture of that, and they just my brothers were freaking. That's losing hilarious. It, man. it was awesome. So, where can we find you, the Doctor Frank on Instagram? On it's Instagram, the yeah. Doctor Frank. Uh, <clears throat> my practice here in Wilmington is called the Frank Institute for mm-hmm. Health and Wellness. Um, it's frankinstitute.com. My, I'll give you my direct email is Dr. Frank, D-R-F-R-A-N-K, at frankinstitute.com. Our office number is, is 910-679-8534. And I tell people, whether you just have a question, you, you don't know, hey, I'm on this, you know, is it right? What do you think? You know, I never try to second guess another doctor because I don't know the story, but I'm happy to help. I have people, like I said, email me all the time and are like, Hey, you know this. I like, read if you this need to know what questions to ask your doctor, yes, right, because a lot of people perfect. don't fucking know yeah. that shit. Yeah, is you know, and, and and you have to understand that there's more to just testosterone. You have to understand total testosterone versus free testosterone versus sex hormone binding globulin. Looking at FSH and mm-hmm. LH, what's your estradiol level? Where's your thyroid? So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, and sometimes people don't know where to start. And I'm happy to help however I can. No, it's it's awesome, and uh, look, d- don't expect results overnight. I think that's another thing yeah. that's that's key. Whereas, like, a lot of people think there's a shortcut to all of this shit. There isn't, and um, you know, uh, again, I am grateful that I met you, and uh, thank you for doing the show. No, thank you guys. This has been ag- this has been awesome. Good. I'm really really excited, and I want you guys to know that you picked up two new listeners right before the show. That your two brothers, both right? my brothers, because <laughs> <laughs> of the fletch. Because of the fletch. Because yeah. of, yeah. of the fletch. So it's six point four million <laughs> and, and two. two. <laughs> and two <laughs> uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Doctor Frank. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.